Thank you, guys. It is very uh, good thing. I'm I'm really uh, honored to be here for the second time. Um, let's start with the story. There was a power surge in UK last year in May. The special thing with this power surge is that it happened uh, where the main servers of British Airways were. So after that power surge, backup did not work. And as a consequence, in the next three days, 75,000 people were affected. They either missed their planes or didn't manage to get off the plane or something like that. And British Airways spent $200 million as, um, uh, to, you know, to make them happy not to take any suits. Um, in addition to that, uh, company value on the stock market uh, were down for $220 million. So while this is a good story uh, to show how much a bug can really cost in this uh, in this situation, it was disaster recovery, backup. Uh, it really makes you think how much one bug can cost. In our work, we are focusing on processes, how to test something, do we follow agile transformation rules, things like that. But we are forgetting that uh, when the decisions need to be made and decisions are made by the business owners, people that are looking uh, financial stuff. So uh, one of the really important things that we need to keep in mind is how much is really worth what we are doing. So um, as you heard, my name is Alexander Ristich. In this session, I will discuss, I will show you how to calculate, how to show to your managers, to your uh, C-level bosses, whether your investment in testing is saving money or they're just spending it without thinking. Um, that was the wrong button. Yeah. Check the situation as it is now, what we are now experiencing in our work. Welcome, you're in the right space. Um, at the moment, most of the people I'm working, most of the people I'm talking to around the world, the code world is agile transformation, DevOps, uh, continuous integration, continuous development. Everybody's talking about that. So what we are seeing is really focus on test automation. Everybody's talking about that. And uh, what's really missing, part that is being forgotten and pushed aside because lack of time, is really testing in order to find bugs. Really manual exploratory testing, trying to break stuff, trying to find some really uh, interesting bugs that your end users will be finding for you if you don't do it yourself. Uh, just uh, to go around that semantics, people usually like to talk, you're not breaking something, it's already broken, you're just showing it. I don't care if cat is black and white, I only care if it's catch bugs or mouses, whatever. So uh, people are only focusing on automation. I have seen examples on our project where customers are wanted 100% automation after so much investment in automation and by default automation engineers are more expensive than manual engineers they want to see some results however it's very difficult to show results other than number of automated tests uh, functional coverage with testing but there is important byproduct of testing missing in those in those reports and that's the, that that byproduct is bugs we are so focused so focused on maintaining complex test automation framework 
and writing codes that there are no bugs anymore. I have experienced situation where there was a scrum team on my one of my projects where um, testing was keeping pace with uh, de uh, development. Every user story was automated, every user story was tested, green builds all the way, and there were no bugs. Like developers were creating uh, bugless code. Imagine that. So as soon as somebody started to, to play with that product, there were bugs all, all around. So that's a situation where we don't want to be. Uh, that's why it's so important when the, either recession hits or somebody from the top start asking questions, do we really need that much time? Do we really, really need a test team that big? How to prove them, how to show them added value that testing is really bringing to the table? Because we are aware what we are doing and how important is that. But outside our world, outside testing world, people are not so aware of this added value that are, we are bringing to the table. It was uh, actually in this session last year, in this uh, conference last year, that I heard Rex Black mentioning this uh, return on investment in, in testing. So I dig deeper, I explore it and prepare some really good arguments for my people when they come to ask me and our customer when we need to show them what is it that we do and why is, that this, why is this making them better? And why should they keep uh, investing in testing? So, uh, like I mentioned, manual exploratory testing is almost forgotten, pushed aside because of lack of time. We don't want that, and we'll discuss once we uh, once we figure out how to how really to calculate this return on investment. I'm going to show you uh, next steps how to improve it or fix it. Uh, we already talked about this. Uh, big big question is if everything is tested, if uh, all user stories are automated and you can show them a list of, a list of automated scripts, uh, green reports, and stuff like that, and then they ask you, okay, but we still have bugs. If everything is automated, where these bugs are coming from? So that is a consequence of not having enough time to really dig deeper, to really think about how to test something, how to do some exploratory testing, and instead we are just focusing on, on uh, test automation framework, coding scripts, or one guy said that really, really uh, nicely, and this is Jason Arborn from Test AI. I really recommend this article. You have a link here. What he said is that test uh, the automation testers try to automate the verification of basic functionality so they can theoretically have time to actually test later. So keyword here, theoretically. We all know that that time never comes. We all only get new stuff to do new stuff to automate. It never have enough time to really test something. So now that you know where is the problem, in this PowerPoint when it's going to be shared with you, you will have a uh, Excel sheet with all the calculation that I'm going to show you now. Um, I'm going to show you two examples. First example is with nice clean round numbers where I'm going to explain you briefly how, how you, what, what, what information you need in order to calculate this. And the second part it will be example from uh, one of our projects uh, where we used real numbers, real people, real number of bugs from Jira. And um, so it's basically how we proved our customer really how much a bug cost in R&D phase, how much a bug cost in support phase. The main thing that we are going to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate how much a bug cost when you find it in research and development phase how much it costs to be found, to fix, and to be verified, and compare that to how much a bug cost in support or warranty phase. Different between those two numbers is how much you're saving by finding bugs in R&D phase instead of your customers finding it for you. Uh, keep in mind that this is just engineering cost of a bug. Remember that story from the beginning, one bug can cost to $420 million if you don't have luck or if you don't test your uh, disaster recovery. Or they can be even more expensive. This is just one example. So let's start. I think this is going to work now. Yeah. Uh, R&D phase, detection cost per buck. I hope you can see the numbers. If you can't, uh, this PowerPoint will be, will be shared with you. So let's start with the beginning. You need to know what's your test budget. 
Again, engineering cost, how much test engineers are being paid. In this example, it is $1 million. Like I said, nice round numbers. You never saw that in real life, right? Uh, you want to deduct uh, future value of, the, uh, of assets created. So things like effort that you spent on creating framework, effort that you spent on uh, creating environment. So that all the things that you're going to use later in your testing cycle on this project or on some other project that's similar to yours, you're going to deduct that because you're looking for the amount of money spent on first encounter with the code, the encounter that will produce bugs. So in this case, 100,000 is taken like this is the amount of money that we spent on setting up framework, setting up environment, things like that, that are going to be used later. Second thing you're going to deduct, this is 500,000, this is regression testing. This is going to be used later when you want to uh, verify the fix uh, when there was a bug, developer fixed it, and you want to verify the fix called regression testing, this amount will be used later. So that leaves us with $400,000. $400,000 was the amount spent on test engineers to test new code, new delivery. And in this example, they found uh, 1,500 bucks. Divide the two number and you get $267 per buck, approximate cost per buck. This is eternal cost of detection. So it's very important. One very uh, important key performance indicator that I would suggest to track. Because if you don't know how, how much a bug costs in R&D phase, then what are you tracking? I mean, we are all, I, I believe that we are focusing too much on processes, following good processes in Agile, DevOps. But we are forgetting to keep an eye on this information, and this is very important because sooner or later when uh, people from the top start asking questions they want answers like this they will not uh, listen too much with your we following the good processes here are the green builds green continuous integration continuous delivery don't tell them anything if you show the numbers with euros dollars they will listen to that so in this example 267 dollars per buck found in r d phase uh, once you find a bug, if you don't want to ignore it, you need to fix it. So uh, R&D phase fixing a bug. It's calculated here that it's assumed that 30 developers, uh, $100,000 per year, uh, they spend three months on fixing, hence the $750,000 for fixing a bug, plus that regression cost from, from before that we deducted. Altogether, $1,250,000 for fixing and verifying that 1,500 bucks. So this is the part where developer fixed and testers verify those fixes. Altogether, $833 per buck. So the next step obviously is we're going to uh, add those two numbers. So 267, uh, eternal cost of detection, then to fix and to verify eight, 833 altogether $1,100. In this example, if $1,100 is the cost of one bug that was found, fixed, and verified in research and development phase. Now, in this point, one thing that could be, um, you know, like uh, objected to this is uh, you're assuming that all bugs will go to customers. However, uh, these, these bugs are only bugs that were found and went through triage and confirmed either by product owner or scrum master, your team, that they need to be fixed. They, you shouldn't let them go to deployment to production. So everybody agreed that these bugs need to be fixed. These are not all the bugs that were found on, in R&D phase. So there could be some other bugs that were found but postponed put in the backlog waiting for better days to be fixed. So uh, in this example, $1,100 was a uh, total cost of bug that was found, fixed and verified in the R&D phase. Now, what happens when you do a, a deployment on production? Your customers start te uh, testing your product for you. So this is how much a bug cost in support phase. 
In uh, this example, uh, I believe a warranty phase was six months and the budget was $500,000. Approximately 50% of their effort was spent on dealing with bugs, talking to customers, analyzing, deploying fixes, testing fixes, all, all the thing connected with, with bugs. And that gives us $250,000 and in that amount of time, 100 bugs were submitted by customers giving us $2,500 per bug. So that was the cost of one bug that was found by customers, fixed by support, and verified by support team, whether they had test engineers with their own team or they verified th themselves. $2,500. Now, fun part, how to find, how to calculate how much money are we saving or expecting uh, too much spending on, on testing? We have a total cost of bug in support phase, 2,500, and we have 1,100 when we found the bug in R&D phase. Difference, 1,400, $1,400. Uh, that was the amount of money that we saved by each bug that we found, fixed, and verified in research and development phase. Each bug that we stopped going to production we saved $1,400 to our company, presuming that they will be found, they will be uh, found by our customers and submitted to support. So we found 1,500 bucks and we saved $1,400 per each bug. Net benefit of, of testing in this example is $2,100,000. And if we want to really calculate this return on investment, we just divided these two numbers, $2,100,000, and divided by 400,000 at net detection cost. This is the amount of money that was spent uh, in first encounter with the code, give, giving us 525% uh, of return on investment in testing. Now, this is the return on investment that's almost, uh, not almost, but impossible to gain anywhere else. If you put 100 euros in your testing team, it will save you 525 euros. Try earn that on um, on house, on stock market, or commodities. It's very hard to do that. Some people know, but it's very hard to do that. So this is kind of argument. This is kind of report that I found to be very beneficial when someone come to talk about me uh, about whether test team is too big whether we really need that much time for testing or when I ask for more people and they are reluctant to give any. Once I can produce this argument, uh, uh, it's discussion become very, very easy for me. So uh, these numbers are all um, nice, rounded and big, but I'm going to show you now real life example from one of our projects. So, um, this was one big uh, educational publishing house in, uh, from US. They have uh, R&D office in Dublin. So we helped them in testing process. Uh, at the top of the project, we had around 50 people working with them on all different testing, development, R&D stuff. But in one small sub project that we uh, calculated this, they were, uh, like I mentioned here, yeah, uh, you see back in the corner, seven auto QA engineers uh, working, our day rate was 389 euros per day. So real numbers like uh, we gave it to our customers. And seven engineers were in peak. We started with two, seven was peak. So in this calculation, we used average, it was four engineers, 12 months research and development phase, uh, 20 days per month, 389 euros per day. So total test budget, was $373,440. That was a test budget. Now, in your Excel that I have prepared, all these entries can be man manip manipulated and uh, you will automatically get results. So you can play. In this uh, example, I put a, because we know test budget, this is 100%. If you don't know test budget, you might enter the project budget and just put uh, amount, percentage of project budget that you think was uh, used for testing. Default is 30%, so if you don't know exactly, default is only 30% for, for testing. So in our case, this was the test budget on that project. 
because we just started a new project uh, and we created a new test framework and set up the new continuous integration, continuous development using Jenkins, all that fancy stuff. It was taken 20% to set up everything that's going to be used later that's going to be used on other projects. That means we deducted this $75,000 uh, and 40% was taken as a cost of regression text test that will come later. So that leaves us roughly 150,000 uh, that was spent on testing on first encounter with the new code, $150,000. So as you can see on the right, uh, in that period of time, we found 1,076 bucks uh, that were fixed and verified. So we just took that from Jira, 1,076 bucks, and just dividing those two numbers uh, it cost it, it cost us 139 euros because it's Dublin 139 euros to find one bug in on that project so that was pretty good pretty good uh, number comparing to that result before uh, now we needed to uh, figure out how much uh, it costs to fix and verify that that those bugs that we found um, we didn't have, we didn't know uh, how much they are paying their developers because their developers were uh, fixing those bugs. But uh, approximate day rate in that time in Ireland was 400 euros per day. And talking to developers, it was average. In, on average, they spend one one day per per bug to fix one one bug. So that gives us to to fix those 1,076 bugs, 430. $430,400 that were spent on fixing those bugs by developers and regression costs that we uh, deducted from before. Total amount to fix and verify those 1,076 bugs was 580,000. And that gives us $540 or euros to fix and verify per bug. So that's eternal cost, eter eternal failure cost. Again, just to uh, subtract those two numbers uh, approximate inter eternal cost of uh, detection and eternal cost of failure on that project it costed us six, 678 uh, euros per one buck in R&D phase so now we have something to compare to support phase uh, on average yeah it's here they, have, they had 17 developers in total uh, 10 of them were resolving those bugs coming from support and warranty phase was six months yeah six months and uh, they were paid a bit they were more experienced engineers so we took in calculation that they were paid 500 euros euros per day six months 20 days so total budget was 600,000 50 percent roughly 60 50 percent of their time was uh, taken by bugs dealing with customers analyzing fixing and verifying bugs gives us around three hundred thousand dollars that were spent in support phase on fixing verifying bugs and in that amount of time again from Jira 282 bugs were found by customers and reported and fixed and verified which gives us $1,064 per buck. That was cost per buck in support phase. Now we have both numbers and on our specific project it costed $1,064 uh, for bug in support phase. It costed us $678 to, to find bug in R&D phase. We saved $386 per buck for every bug that we found in research and development phase instead of our customers finding them for us. And when we wanted to see how much money we saved to our company, 1,076 bucks times 386 uh, gives us total benefit of testing $415,000. And if you remember, we used $150,000 to in first encounter with the new code that produced those uh, 1,076 bucks. So in this project, our return on investment was 278%. So after showing that to our customer, we never had problem with the customer 
complaining about test budget amount of money they saving be because they understood that they were saving money by paying us to do testing. So hopefully this calculation, if you start tracking these numbers, this calculation is going to make your life easier. Because like I said at the beginning, we are focusing too much on coding, setting up framework, following the good practices, while business decisions or financial decisions are at the end uh, stopping us from work or uh, giving us opportunity to work more. So now that you know how to calculate it, uh, let's see w uh, some practices that we are doing to increase or, or fix it. One thing that we found to be very useful is to do a total review of a QA process. We've done this with a couple of customers. We have some 25 questions, 25 key points that we are examining, like uh, source for test scenarios, when does test team start to be involved in testing, uh, you know, good practices for, from, from agile environment, things like that. Uh, communication between testing and development, all that things. Uh, one very important thing is to really remember the basic stuff, like testing pyramid. Um, we had examples where people coming to us asking for help and uh, demanding 100% coverage on UI level of test automation. And then we say, okay, let's investigate what you already have. Let's talk about uh, unit test level. How, how big is the coverage there? And they don't know. So remember the testing pyramid, remember that the goal there is 100%. Remember when you're uh, doing component testing, do them thinking about the next system integration level, thinking about reusability. Choose your scenarios wisely on UI level because those tests are, are very slow and very fragile. So you don't want to focus there forgetting about unit and component tests. So remember the test pyramid. Um, you support in test planning, of course, because support team is the one that knows exactly what your end customers are doing with your project. And they almost never been invited to when they, when you are discussing about testing. You're, you're discussing how to test something, how to create a product that your customers are using it, but you don't know how your customers are using it. And support team are exactly the guys who can tell you that because they are dealing with bugs coming from customers. Always uh, remember the Pareto principle because you will never have enough time to test everything. So you need to know where to focus, where to find those 20% of your product that everybody is using on the market. And support team can help you there. But maybe most of all, one thing that's most important of, more important of any of these, focus on bugs. Because I'll s repeat the third times, and this is, will be my last time, y we are focusing too much on coding, too much on test automation framework, too much on DevOps principles, and we are forgetting to test, we are forgetting to submit bugs. Nobody, nobody wants to get his hands dirty anymore by submitting a bug. And I still find that most amusing part of my work as a test engineer. So that would be all for me. Uh, you have uh, my contact, contact uh, details here. So feel free to get in touch, LinkedIn or by mail. Um, in this PowerPoint, you will get uh, calculation. The example, one first example will be with a real nice number, with a nice round numbers. And second example, second tab will be uh, customized for you to enter your data and to play with numbers so you can get automatically calculated how much money you're saving or expensive or, or just waiting on when you invest in testing. So thank you for your attention. Hope you will get something really useful from this. And I'm waiting for the questions. Thank you. Okay, so I can see that we've already switched to the questions. Uh -huh. uh, and the lucky winner that will get a prize afterwards is Grzegorz Kosiec. So the question is, you mentioned that time for exploratory tests is really crucial from your experience. What percentage of time for testing should be planned for exploratory testing? It's a good question. Of course, I will not be able to give you exact numbers in percentage, but I will, uh, what I, very important message is that you need to shift focus. 
now focusing on test automation while exploratory testing is left behind and you have don't have enough time uh, automation testing was supposed to help to uh, earn some time for test engineers to be able to play with with the product manually to man do manual exploratory testing so in order to shift that focus back to manual exploratory testing you need to use I would suggest to use this calculation to show them uh, how much money you really that you need really need to find bugs and maybe try to organize a couple of sessions uh, like mob testing organize the whole team let them play with with the product and see how much how many bugs you will find and that will be a good example why it's so important to have those uh, manual exploratory sessions show them how much how many bugs you found show them this calculation show them how much money they saved by investing in that session i know that can be expensive but this is saving money so to go back to that question i can't give you exact percentage but you need to it's more important to shift focus back to m exploratory testing automation is only a tool to give you more time to play with the product and now we're living in a world where the automation is primary it's a must and manual exploratory testing is something we, we don't have time for. That's wrong. Okay, let's switch to the next question. <clears throat> what is the industry standard for testing budget during build phase? Is any research available on that topic? Uh, that's a really good question. Again, only thing that I have encountered so far is that 30% of the project budget is some universal default for testing budget 30 pr percent from the whole uh, project budget that's i have encountered a couple of my projects i have never seen some really good um, numbers that would go against that or so 30 percent if best i can get <laughs> sorry okay let's switch to the next question is your calculation based on scrum agile or waterfall project? It is not connected to any uh, software de development lifecycle or any or any agile. You can you can customize it for 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 your project. It can be used for waterfall. It can be used for agile environment. Uh, on our project, we we were in Scrum team following agile principles. So it's not. And once again, it's not. Mo I'm not the author. I use something from Rex Black. I use some part of his stuff. I use something from Jason Arbon, put it all together and packed it nicely, and created that Excel for you to use. Yep. Okay. Let's switch to the last question. How to estimate cost of bug found by client if you don't know numbers like how much money is spent on developers? Well. Uh, that's excellent question, but if you don't know that as a test engineer working on a team, your uh, test lead or project manager, someone will know those questions. And if you explain to him why you need these numbers, I think he'll, he will be willing to give you those numbers. It's not, not like, a, um, you know, some special secret. Uh, day rate, you don't need exact day rate per person to know how much, uh, how much your, colleague salary is, but you need average rate to find out how, how much money is uh, spent per buck. So there are people who knows exactly. You can use uh, day, day, uh, day rate, average day, day rate, and you can talk with your developers how much time uh, on average they spend on each buck. So you don't need a uh, um, calculation in one euro precise. You can, you can use average, average numbers. Okay, one more question. How would you divide the team of Q&As between engineers responsible for automation only and engineers hunting for bugs, trying to break the code, etc.? I would not force anyone to do something he doesn't want to. I have found uh, that people in, in our company, we have some of them really focus on testing, really focus on automation, um, want to uh, code, and don't want to do anything manually. On the other hand, we have people who want to, uh, to you know, get your, their hands dirty with manual exploratory testing. So I would really try to leave to them where they want to focus. 
but I really believe that uh, in order to be good full-scale test engineer, you need to have both skills. You need to know how to code, you need to know how to write test automation scripts, but you also need to know how to do manual exploratory testing. You need to uh, put yourself in the shoes of your customers and to do with your product same things as your customer would do. So I don't believe that there could be good test engineer doing only one thing. You need to know, if you want to be real good in your job, you need to know how to do both. Okay, that was the last question. Yeah. So once again, I would like to ask you to give a big applause to Alexander for his great presentation. Thank you.